and a good angle by Usyk as he tries to shift to the right and then drag that left hand back behind him and score. And then he nailed him right oh! the right down and tell you. Down he goes with the left hand. The momentum. We saw Usyk building up and it's over just like that. Alexander Usyk is one of the most successful boxers of our generation. Olympic medal, all titles in the cruiserweight, championship belts in the royal division. All of that is already at the feet of a talented Ukrainian and to achieve absolute greatness, he needs to take only one belt. And will that be as easy as it sounds? Ladies and gentlemen, great and terrible Tyson Fury, one of the most controversial and unpredictable boxers to ever live, still holds the WBC title that Alexander needs so desperately. Sure, in his last fight, the Gypsy King did not have his very best performance, but better believe that it's way too early to write him off in the fight with Usyk. It seems like we are ready to witness the battle of the best heavyweights on the planet. The world of boxing was anticipating this fight for more than a year and faced a lot of talks, schemes and uncertainties, but now all of that is left behind. Finally, there are people who pulled out enough money to bring this fight to reality and now we have a date of this historic event, February 17th of 2024. We will find out the name of the new undisputed heavyweight champion very soon. And for now, take a seat friends, you're about to see the countdown for the fight between Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go! As always, let's rewind the clock and talk about how we got here. We should start with Usyk. As right now, he is the A side in this clash. Ukrainian was too young and inexperienced, but the second time, being the captain of the national team, he destroyed all of his opponents and won the medal. At the moment when Usyk was turning pro, everybody thought he would go straight to the heavyweight, but at first, Alexander decided to conquer the cruiserweight, and it took him five years to do so. In 2018, Usyk became the winner of the World Boxing Super Series after which he knocked out Tony Bellew in an intense fight and confirmed his status of the undisputed champion. This was the last victory in his division, as a year later, our hero debuted as a heavyweight with a win over Chaz Witherspoon. Now, let's talk about Fury a little bit, and I don't even know what to say as many of you know the biography of this guy almost by heart. Tyson did not spend much time in amateurs, but his unordinary appearance helped him to draw attention, so the British fans really wanted for his debut in the pros. During the first couple of years, Fury was wandering about home arenas while his opponents were veterans and clumsy tomato cans who didn't look like boxers. From 2014, Gypsy King has been facing serious opponents which eventually brought him to the title fight with Klitschko. To the world community's shock, a huge but incredibly fast Brit beat the great Ukrainian, then ducked the rematch and disappeared for three and a half years. Tyson was actively ruining his life with alcohol and drugs, but his significant others helped him to return to the sport where he was set to face Deontay Wilder. The first fight between the two titans of the heavyweight division resulted in a draw, and Tyson knocked his opponent out and took the WBC belt. While Fury and Deontay were negotiating the final fight in the trilogy, Usyk got a ticket into the top 10 of the division. The one to test the skills of a former cruiserweight happened to be a renowned Derek Chisora who suddenly racked up a streak of three victories. In his last fight, Del Boy finished his countryman, David Price. Chisora went after a prominent technician with looping shots and oddly enough, they were landing. Usyk's defensive style did not let him get away from such a big and physically strong opponent, so the first half of the fight was a real challenge for Alexander. Somewhere at the middle of the bout, Chisora began to slow down because of his own pace and the Ukrainian finally got ahead. Till the end of the fight, Usyk was peppering his opponent with his best shots but ultimately couldn't stun him. Unanimous decision victory. 
know, you, this, it's real testing heavyweight, you know? Yeah, it's testing, uh, just sort of big guy, hard guy. You know, it's, it's beautiful boxing, I love boxing, yeah. Since his first performance in the Royal Division, when Alexander was asked about who he wanted to fight, he mentioned only one name, Anthony Joshua. It was clear that Usyk, who already held all cruiserweight titles, wanted to replicate his success at a new place. But first, he needed to feel out the heavyweight, which he did in the fights with Witherspoon and Chisora. Now, Alexander was fully ready to face the champion who beat Kubrat Pulev at the end of 2020 and defended his belts. Based on the odds, Usyk opened up as a huge plus 300 underdog. But these were just numbers which did not reflect reality. AJ was way taller and had a great advantage in reach, but Alexander's incredible work simply did not let him capitalize on that. The Ukrainian was very mobile on the feet, changed angles of his attacks and was not covering up all the time, which is essentially against a puncher. One could say that instead of boxing like a classic heavyweight, Usyk utilized the game plan of a middleweight and it worked perfectly against Joshua. Thanks to the speed, Alexander was stepping behind the feet of a sluggish Brit and attacking him with a straight left or a lead hand hook. At first, Joshua was easily eating these shots, but every subsequent connection made things worse and in the end of the fight, Joshua got stunned and almost went down. The knockout in Usyk's favor would have made this victory even more crushing, but even without it, we still heard and knew. So the plan was just uh, to walk in, to see, to start. Uh, so we went in, we saw, we started, and then the 12th round. So they said, go on, put some speed on. So I did, and then they say, and the new. So that was the plan. Only two people in the entire heavyweight division did not care about championship scraps, and that's of course Tyson and Deontay Wilder. Paychecks of these guys allowed them not to think about the belts and focus on their personal rivalry, which was more important, especially for Wilder. Acknowledging his devastating loss in the second fight, Bronze Bomber decided to make significant adjustments in his approach and even found a new coach with whom he began his preparation for the Fury fight. We witnessed the results of Deontay's work on October 21st. Samora waves it off, he's not counting! A change of environment definitely benefited Wilder and he looked a lot better than before. The Gypsy King was still superior to his opponent in the level of boxing, but timely pressure and single shots of Deontay were efficient. He was stunning and even dropped Fury. In fact, the entire fourth round of this fight was one of the hardest in Tyson's career and he barely made it through, but then he managed to pay back his opponent with twice as many shots. At the end of the fight, Deontay looked like a torture victim and it was easy for the Gypsy King to shut the bronze bomber down with the right hand. You've got to keep moving forward and uh, in a positive manner and keep fighting. Not just in a boxing fight, but in life in general, because nothing's ever going to be easy. If you want something that's very hard to get, you've got to sacrifice and dedicate and keep pushing no matter what. And never let anybody tell you you can't. Because tonight, again, time and time again, I show that it's very possible to achieve anything you ever want as long as you believe it and in here. After the whole world witnessed another victory of Fury, there were questions on who Tyson was going to fight next. Obviously, Alexander Usyk wanted to take the number one contender spot, but he was rejected, though given a no less big and great fight. Instead of a unification title bout, we were sold a rather weird fight between Fury and Dylan White. The villain was far from being a bad boxer, who also earned the right to fight for the title sooner or later. However recent, though avenged loss was a bit confusing. 
Either way, any fight of Furies is interesting even in itself. Despite impressive size and physical strength, White simply couldn't reach Fury and landed his best punch. The Gypsy King controlled every move of his opponent, kept him at a needed distance and peppered him with jabs. Not very spectacular, but a convincing performance from Fury lasted for almost six rounds and ended with a knockout by a brilliant right uppercut. A vivid victory over the villain was immediately overshadowed by Fury's words at the press conference. The champion stated that he did enough in boxing and plans to retire. An extremely sudden decision from Fury. Before I fought Deontay Wilder 3, I was in my house in Vegas and I said to Paris, I said, this is going to be the last fight, baby. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. And she said, yes, I'm happy. Let it be the last fight. And then after the fight, I said to her in the shower, I said, it's definitely the last fight. There's no more of this. And then I was happy with that decision. And I get a call from Frank saying, you know, we can do a homecoming fight at Wembley. And I was like, you know, I said to Paris, I said, I've got to go one more time. I've got to get the old boots out again. Alexander was very upset with the words of his potential opponent about retirement, as the only thing the Ukrainian wanted the most was a unification title bout. However, at first he had to defend his belt against the former champion, Anthony Joshua. An almost one-sided first fight hurt the pride of the Brit tennis team, so the rematch was necessary. The only surprising thing here was the location. The second fight was held in Saudi Arabia thanks to the local sheiks who, according to the talks, gave both boxers $40 million. The overall picture resembled the first fight with little adjustments coming mostly from Joshua. This time around, the Brit was not falling out of position that often, did not let Alexander step behind his lead leg and attack the body very frequently. The Ukrainian was feeling these punches, but sometimes he made it seem like the strikes were illegal, which we will talk about later. Overall, Alexander looked better again and fairly won via split decision. Size doesn't matter when you are fighting. That was a real war, genuine war in the ring and the size is uh, not that uh, important. This is where the real spirit works. Despite the official statements from Fury about his retirement, Usyk, like many other boxers, experts and journalists, thought that Tyson would come back soon. And that's what happened. A month after the rematch between Alexander and AJ, the Gypsy King reached out to the media and pridefully announced his triumphal return, and not against just somebody, but Derek Chisora, who he already beat twice in the past. The veteran with a record of 3-1 in his last four was the best contender for the WBC title, right? The fight went down as expected, A signature pressure and looping shots from Chisora were not a problem for Fury, who dealt with such a tactic numerous times. The only more or less successful round for the contender was the first, as beginning from the second one, Gypsy King easily tied his opponent in the clinch and beat him up at a mid-range. The veteran's humiliation continued for almost the entire given time and ended in the 10th round. Frankly speaking, it wasn't a very exciting fight, but Fury easily made up for it and caught Usyk out right from the ring. Where's Alexander Usyk, the rabbit? Hey, rabbit! Usyk, you're next, little bitch, you're next. You are next. Me and you, soccer, next. Me and you. You get me, little soccer, rabbit. Pussy! You clutch gold enough, and I'll do you as well, gappy teeth. You ugly little man. You ugly little man. Let's get it on, Hicks! I already done one Ukrainian clinch go dinner, and I'll do you as well, Gappy Teeth. You ugly little man! You ugly little man! Let's get it on, Hicks! Promoters and the Ukrainians team in particular have been planning to organize a fight between Usyk and Fury for a long time. The first attempt was made in 2021, but back then Alexander took the rematch with Joshua and after that, Fury drove into the sunset with his weird retirement. Now, nothing was in the way of this fight. 
Alexander was holding three belts, Tyson had won, and their fight, for the first time in many, many years, could identify the name of the undisputed heavyweight champion. But all of that was just talk. From the first days of negotiations, the Gypsy King's side began to bust his opponent's nuts and ask for an unequal fee. Fury wanted a 70 to 30 money split in his favor, and that was extremely unfair, but Alexander accepted these terms, though he insisted that there should be an immediate rematch clause in the contract. Greedy belly, I accept your offer. 70 30 split to fight with you on April 29th at Wembley. But you will promise to donate to Ukrainian immediately after the fight. On million pounds on every day of your daily, you will pay 1% from your poorest to Ukrainian people. Deal. Tyson laughed at the idea of any rematches. Never worry about what's in the future and how many more dollars you can get after you've been defeated. Worry about the fight. April 29th, no rematch clause. The winner takes the glory. The loser goes home with his dick in his hand. How about that? The negotiations were very intense and long. Fury continued to impose ridiculous conditions, while Usyk's team obviously was against that and stood their ground. In the end, this back and forth annoyed the WBA to such an extent that they put out an ultimatum. The negotiations have to be over by April the 1st or the fight is not happening. At a certain point, it seemed like the Ukrainians team accepted all Fury's conditions, but then they suddenly withdrew from the negotiations, referring to a wild behavior from Gypsy King who dictates whatever he wants. It's hard to tell what exactly made Usyk's side end the negotiations, but one thing is very clear. The Brit did everything he could to make this fight fall through. The fans were quite upset with this outcome, while the Brit wasn't really sad and kept on saying that their fight can possibly happen sooner or later. Talk about that at the moment, but I just think he's just running away at the moment. It's all this talk of big money, big money. Listen, we all want to make big money, mm. but if it's not real, if it is real, well, we'll find out. Mm. Time will tell a story anyway. I'll punch you face in any time he wants it, <laughs> but he's a little <laughs> and he won't sign the contract because he knows you'll get them big fists all in his face. I wish he would sign the contract, stop being a little shit house. But it's an easy fight for me. I cut him down inside six rounds, and he knows that. That's why he's running. Alexander was a lot humbler and talked only about his goal. So I'll tell you like this. Our goal, and we are on the way to our goal, is to become the undisputed heavyweight champion. After this, we will try to make plans for the future. Before now, this is the highest priority. Despite vague statements from both parties, all of us clearly knew that we can forget about the main fight in the heavyweight class for now, and the testament to that was the announcement of a new contender for Usyk's titles. There were three candidates, Daniel Dubois with an interim WBA belt, Filip Hergovic from the IBF, and a rising Zhu Lei Zhang from the WBO. As a result of negotiations, it was young Dubois who got an opportunity to contest the titles. At that moment, his record was 19-1 and, and in his last fight, the Brit nicknamed Dynamite showed a heart of the champion and despite a leg injury, knocked his opponent out. As always, Usyk was faster and more mobile than his opponent. An incredible activity of Alexander allowed him to land many significant shots from both hands, especially his straight left, and Dubois' only answer to that were shots to the body. At first, it seemed like it was pointless, but every subsequent shot made it obvious that Usyk was feeling these punches, and in the fifth round, the champion suddenly went down. Daniel connected an explosive shot, sending his opponent on the canvas, but the strike landed on the short's band, due to which it was registered as illegal and didn't count as a knockdown. It's up for you to decide whether it was fair or not, and let's get back to the fight. Figuring that he can't mess around any longer, the Ukrainian pushed the pace and gave the Brit a whooping that ended in the ninth round after the contender went down a second time. The first stoppage victory for Usyk in the Royal Division. I'm ready, I'm ready one fight and tomorrow. And a rematch. And a street fight. 
I'm ready. Bare knuckle. Tomorrow, maybe right now. <laughs> not, uh, not boxing gloves, but a street fight. Of course, considering this controversial moment, many people began to question Usyk. While Tyson Fury reacted to what happened to his potential opponent with just one picture in funny shorts. Either way, very soon we quickly forgot about this situation in Alexander's fight as we were about to hear big news. For almost two years, a former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou wanted to fight Gypsy King. And in July, we got the news that this fight was going to happen. An unreal fight for many different reasons, it was supposed to happen under professional rules but without the belt on the line. And the sheiks from Saudi Arabia are the ones who gave it to us. The clash of two champions in their sport was set for the end of October, when it would be time to start the festival in Riyadh. One could say that this fight happened to be a cherry on its top, at least for the boxing fans. Yes, this fight was absolutely not what we expected, but it was early for the fans to be upset as millionaires from Saudi Arabia gave mere mortals two fights and organized that very clash between Usyk and Fury. The championship battle was set for the end of December in hopes that Tyson wouldn't get severe injuries after the scrap with Ngannou and can have a quick turnaround from one camp to another. That was supposed to be the case in a normal world, however, in our crazy universe, anything can happen. Before the fight, Fury talked a lot and looked no worse than usual, but in the ring we saw a completely different Tyson. Weak, sluggish, absolutely no fight IQ. He was just a shell of himself, while Ngannou delivered a performance of his lifetime. Not only did the former MMA fighter not get tired, but he also landed many shots and even dropped the champion with a hook in the third round. The judges ultimately picked the Gypsy King as a winner, but the aftertaste was quite unpleasant. Didn't underestimate him. I trained for, tra uh, tra for 12 weeks, give it the best uh, preparation I could have done, and that's it. As you can see, the Brit was disappointed with this sad performance he delivered against Ngannou, who is not a boxer. Answering the question on whether the fight with Usyk is still happening, Tyson was very passive. Until that day, I'm not interested. I told you this before. Don't bother me about boxing after this fight. I'm going home. I'm going to have a break. I'm going to spend some time with my kids. Alexander himself was watching the fight of his bitter rival from the front row and right after the results were announced, he gave an interview. Uh, I not think, uh, but I, uh, I will be training 300 uh, percent. But uh, listen, it's boxing. Uh, it's, uh, maybe it's a demand surprise. Maybe, you know. I must uh, go ring and uh, hungry percent. Now, the initial plans to have the fight between Usyk and Fury in December were completely out of the question. The Gypsy King needed to recover from his physical and most importantly mental traumas and it could take a long time. The fans split in their guesses, some even said that now Tyson would pull out of this fight. But in November, we were told that the bout was rescheduled for the beginning of 2024 on February the 17th. The great fight is happening! Soon, the news was followed by the long-anticipated press conference. Properly, the gentleman in training of all the belts. Glory to the hero. An idiot of the belts that I gave him, including my ring magazine that I only vacated last year, so I can win it back three times, sausage. I'm going to bust him. Sausage, ugly little man, rabbit. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. I don't want him all more. You know what's coming, you're getting smashed to pieces, sausage. You're fighting the best British heavyweight. Hey, my friend, <laughs> you, you stop? Maybe enough? Sorry? Enough? Enough what? You stop, you stop talking? I come here to pick a fight. I didn't come here to play games. I didn't get all dressed up for nothing. I come here to fight. I want to talk about, before he stands up, and starts to walk around the table. Tyson, Fury, thank you very much, brother, for your courage and bravery to accept the fight with the future undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Thank you so much. 
Let the fight go You're on. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let her in the ring with a future heavyweight undisputed champion, me. Yous are all dossers. He's getting knocked out. And yous two are going to be working for me, carrying me bag slinks. I'm not thinking of Tyson Fury. I tell you why. Because I have an uh, extraordinary difficult camp ahead. I'm not thinking about the fight because I'm, uh, I have to think about the sparrings. I have to, to go through uh, swimmings, uh, all the... Uh, running races, all the, uh, all, all the, all other things that I need to to go through in a training camp, and uh, I don't think of Tyson Fury. And the only reason I uh, have him in my mind is because I see him here in uh, walking in the corridors. Uh, you have to ask him to be sure, but probably I'm singing and dancing there in his head. As you can see, the preparation of both boxes is going at full speed, and it seems like nothing promises any trouble. We will ultimately see this scrap. Three years of negotiations, thousands of hours of speculations, bargaining and agreements, and all of that just for 36 minutes of a fight at best. I can't believe it. Actually, I really want to see how this vivid story goes down. Will Usyk stomp the opinions of everybody who hasn't believed in him for many years and dismantle Fury? Or Tyson will pull himself together and show his signature boxing and not his laughing stock of a performance against Nganu. To be fair, I have no idea considering the last performances of both of them and I don't know how the fight will really go. So I just wish it is February already and we can finally see the fight for status of the best boxer on the planet.